Welcome to another MTG Mox Box video, your destination for Magic the Gathering box breaks and more. If you like what we do, please support us by participating in our box breaks. You can find us on our website mtgmoxbox.com or through our listings on eBay under seller handle MTG Mox Box. You can also find us on social media in the links in the description below and watch us play Magic on Twitch under MTG Mox Box. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think. This video series will look at price movements of cards in recently released Magic the Gathering sets. We'll highlight moves greater than $2 and try to point out any trends we're seeing. You can use this information to see if you should wait on a particular card or pull the trigger before the price goes higher. As we continue to collect data each week, we'll include analysis across longer periods of time. First is Modern Horizons 2, which released June 18th, 2021. We are now at 7 months since this set's release. I looked online and read that the first Modern Horizons set was in print for about a year, and if Modern Horizons 2 follows a similar schedule, we might see more movement in the middle of this year. At the time of making this video, at the end of January, we have one card reaching new lows and one reaching new highs, with everything else not moving significantly enough to include in the video. First, we have another fetch land reaching new lows this week. Verdant Catacombs is now 2084, dropping about $2 from a month ago. And the card reaching new highs this week is Urza's Saga, now at 4168. This card has been incredibly popular across formats, and due to its unique nature and abilities, it should continue to hold value. Finally, while Ragavan Nimble Pilfer has not moved much. Uh, price-wise across the past month, it is worth noting that it was announced earlier this week that it is now banned in the Legacy format. However, it is still legal in Modern, Vintage, and Commander, so it looks like the price will continue to hold for now, but this one is worth watching in the coming months. Next up is Dungeons & Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, which released July 23rd, 2021. It has now been about half a year since this set's release, and the set's value has stayed pretty static over the past month. One card that didn't move enough to be included in this video is Loth Spider Queen. She is now at 12.09, dropping 17.8% across the past month. Now I kind of want to make a Spider Tribal deck, but I think they really need to reprint Arachnogenesis first. Next up is Midnight Hunt, which released September 24th, 2021. We are now at just over four months since this set's release. And this week we also saw the release of Double Feature, which includes all the cards from Midnight Hunt, so we could see prices affected in the coming weeks. One card posting a decent drop, both in the past week and across the past month, is Poppet Stitcher, which transforms into Poppet Factory. It is now at 433, down 33% from last week, and 37% from a month ago. Another card that also dropped across the past month is Renin7, now at 1523 after dropping over $2 from a month ago. And there were no cards moving significantly enough higher to warrant inclusion in this video. Next up is Crimson Vow, which released November 19th, 2021. It has now been just over two months since the release of this set, and we are seeing many of the set's cards come down in price. The release of Double Feature could also have an impact on this set's prices in the coming weeks as well. There were several notable cards dropping in price, including these popular ones. First is Necroduality, which is now at 1743, down 12.7% from a month ago, but is still holding the number 2 spot on the most expensive normal bordered cards behind Cultivator Colossus. Next up is Toxroll the Corrosive, absorbing several minus $1 counters to 1165 now, or down 18.9% from a month ago. Third is a card hitting new lows this week. Chandra Dressed to Kill is now at 744, 
and is down 27.8% from a month ago. Finally, Olivia Crimson Bride is now at 936 after posting the largest decline across the past month of 28.8%. Here is a look at the latest values by set for the past two months. It is nice to see the Dungeons & Dragons set holding value, and the drop for both Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow were not completely unexpected. The next few months should be exciting to see how Kamigawa Neon Dynasty will fare compared to these sets that we're already tracking. Since the next video will be the first one to include the Neon Dynasty set, for this video's question, share in the comments below any card that's been previewed so far that has piqued your interest and why. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you made it this far, thank you for watching and please consider clicking like and subscribing to our channel. We'll continue tweaking this video series to keep it interesting and useful for viewers, so please leave a comment to let us know what you think. Thank you! Alright, before we get to the drawing, I want to quickly respond to last video's question. As a reminder, the last video's question was asking about your preference for black and white or regular colored cards. This was in regards to the double feature release. Uh, after posting it, I actually got kind of worried that a question with a binary option for a response might not be as interesting as an open-ended one. Uh, but you guys came through, so thank you for your responses, especially if you provided the reasoning behind your choice. Uh, to answer my own question, I really enjoy putting together decks that share a common visual theme. Uh, for example, one of my favorite decks is Mono White SRAM Auras, uh, but only including cards with uh, that were printed in the old border. So if I ever decide uh, to do like a black and white deck, I would probably choose these uh, black and white versions as well. Uh, anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and get to the giveaway. Just need to copy the link. Okay. Right. Okay, scrap comments. And pick a winner. All right, Eli Rotundo. I think whether I'd pick the normal version first is the black and white version of card largely depends on the deck the card will be in. For example, black and white cards fit the aesthetic nature of a spooky or horror themed deck. However, I'm not sure I'd want to include a single black and white version of a card in a deck where it would be the only one in the style. Yeah, I think we have a really similar deck building um, taste, I guess. Uh, so thank you for your comment and uh, congrats and we'll be in touch.